Historically, most of the people who came to cities were far more concerned with survival than with urban amenities. The Irish who came to Boston fleeing the potato famine, the Russians who came to New York to escape the pogroms, and the African Americans who came to Chicago to escape the Jim Crow South. They weren't looking for cooler art museums or Mediterranean climates or really good cappuccino. They wanted safety and a decent living. Most urban migrants in the developing world want the same things today. But in the wealthy world today, urban success is increasingly driven by consumption, not production. I don't mean that cities don't need jobs. Every successful city needs a robust economic engine. But I do mean that wealthier, better educated people are increasingly willing to base their moving decisions based on quality of life, even if it means taking a pay cut. Los Angeles and Miami are consumer cities, and climate provided these places with their original appeal. But people also seem to be willing to accept lower real wages to experience the excitement of New York. London's sky-high real estate prices are also a sign of its consumer appeal. I have often argued that the best economic development strategy is to attract and train smart people and then get out of their way. That may be too simplistic of you, but it does emphasize that improving a city's quality of life is actually an economic development strategy. Moreover, since quality of life increases property values, cities seeking more revenue have an added incentive to improve their urban amenities. But what attributes make cities particularly attractive places to live? Climate is clearly important. January temperature is the single best predictor of metropolitan area growth during the 20th century in the U.S. But city governments can't do much about the weather. They can do something about the man-made aspects of urban life, but what should they focus on? Are people looking for fun, hip eateries, cool clubs, art galleries, or are they seeking more basic amenities like safe streets and short commutes? Should cities be deregulating food trucks and bars, or should they be regulating buildings to preserve historic neighborhoods? In this section, we're going to ask why amenities have become a more important part of urban success and what cities can do to enhance those amenities.